Mayor and Board of Aldermen for Tuesday, May the 3rd. I um, have a few changes to the agenda. Um, I want to add at, um, we'll do it right before we do number seven. Um, we will do adopt a proclamation proclaiming May 8th through the 14th National Hospital Week. And then I know that Jimmy has two additions to the agenda that we will do at 7A and 7B. And I'm going to let you tell us what they are, Jimmy, because I didn't write them down. Okay, the first one is request permission from the mayor to sign the state local disaster assistance agreement for payment from DR 4598. And that is the February 2021 storm. Okay. The second one is to name Jimmy Allgood as the designated applicant agent for public assistance for DR 4598. Awesome. All right. All right, so that'll be 7A and 7B, and then you'll be at number eight Correct. as well. So that's an addition um, at, I guess that would be 6E, and then 7A and 7B. Um, is there, are there any other changes? No, ma'am. Um, I didn't have any. Then can we have a motion to adopt the agenda? So the moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Um, we are going to have an update from Visit Oxford in just a moment, but since our last meeting, we had our most successful Double After Arts Festival ever, our 25th anniversary. And I've uh, had over 112,000 people over two days, 20,000 people in front of the stage on Friday night to watch Brett Young, and about 16,000 the next night, and amazing weather, art and food vendors that were happy and had record sales, and uh, the music was great, and, and we're going to hear from Leanne and Kenny here shortly, and I just want to thank them publicly for all of the hard work that went into making this, this festival so successful and to all of our department heads that are here and all the departments of the city. It takes every single employee of the city to make events like Double Decker happen. And so I just want to say thank you to all of you. Um, Hazardous Waste Day was held on Saturday at the Lafayette County Arena and it was a huge success. Thank you to Amberlin and all the folks that made that happen. 602 households took advantage of that opportunity. We collected two 18 wheelers full of chemicals and paint. One 18 wheeler full of electronics, one 18 wheeler truckload of tires, hundreds of bottles of prescriptions and sharks, hundreds of pounds of used appliances and scrap metal, and one huge snake that came out of one of the tires that anyone sent me a picture of, and that would have just been it for me. We'd have shut that thing down. So, thank you to Amberlin. That is all for the mayor's report tonight. I ask you to authorize the okay, approval. Just a second, Mayor. I've got yes. something to add. To that oh, yeah. Go right. ahead. Leanne and Kenny have something they want to do. So moved. Second. So All moved. In favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, I ask you to consider the consent agenda. Motion made to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. All right, at 6E, um, I'm going to ask you to adopt a proclamation. Whereas those who serve in hospitals play a critical role to the welfare of our community, and whereas National Hospital Week originated in 1921 as a community celebration and is now the nation's largest healthcare event, and whereas Baptist Memorial Hospital in North Mississippi uses this week to celebrate all team members in the hospital and medical groups as well as our community partners, and whereas the success of our local hospital could not be achieved without the contributions and dedication of all Baptist Memorial Hospital in North Mississippi personnel, and whereas it is most appropriate to set aside special time to recognize the positive impact 
made by all personnel of Baptist Memorial Hospital, North Mississippi. Now therefore I, Robin Tannehill, Mayor of the City of Oxford, do hereby declare that the City of Oxford joins with Baptist Memorial Hospital, North Mississippi, in designating May 8th through the 14th as National Hospital Week, and I express great appreciation for the dedicated people, facilities, and technologies that make reliable health care accessible to our community. Proclaim this the third day of May, 2022. Could I have a motion to proclaim May 8th through the 14th as National Hospital Week? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Now, we'll invite you towards the girls back to get an update from Visit Oxford. All right. Um, thanks for having me. So we we already have exhaustively talked about Double Decker. So um, I wanted to come. It's National Tourism Week this week. Um, it ends on the seventh, I guess, right before Hospital Week. But um, it is a week where we like to celebrate the impacts that tourism makes. So every year when we get our numbers from Visit Mississippi, I like to come and just kind of go through those and make sure that everybody is aware of the big impact that tourism has in our community and obviously within our state as well. So um, I'll just go through this rat card um, quickly for everybody. Um, this year, we had a great rebound from COVID and $172.6 million were spent um, by visitors to Oxford um, within the Oxford community. So then that results in 16.2 million in state and local taxes attributed um, to that tourism spending. So um, my favorite thing to say <laughs> is that tourism taxes are consumption taxes. So um, that is just kind of above and beyond. We, we choose to go out to eat or we choose to stay in a lodging property. So um, they are really kind of bread and butter for communities um, that get to receive them. So um, if we didn't have those taxes attributed and based on our population, we would have to take in 840 more dollars a year per household to be able to have what we have, to be able to do great things like Double Decker and to um, market Oxford all over the country. Um, so it really is a, a benefit here and the return on investment is, is pretty big um, for us. And in Oxford, it actually means a little more than other places, um, which is a, kind of another feather in our cap. The state um, average is about 600. And Seven thousand. I mean, what six hundred and seventy-seven dollars per household within the state, and you can see the other counties that I've highlighted over um, Lee County, um, October Halls on there as well. So just kind of for your reference, and obviously population plays a big part in that. Um, and then we've also kind of highlighted up at the top the visitor spending from fiscal year sixteen all the way through twenty-one, um, and you can see that we are getting. We're getting back close to those um, 2019 numbers. That's our highest um, to date. So um, we really feel like if we know in 2021, that fiscal year was fall of 20. So we had um, limited meetings. We had limited stadium capacities. A lot of businesses closed. A lot of people just not traveling, period. We didn't have double-decker in this fiscal year. So we really feel like um, we're going to kind of go um, above and beyond for fiscal year 22 that we're in currently, but of course we won't have those numbers until this time next year. Um, so just wanted to kind of give that update and then another um, fun fact that we haven't always gotten this information from the state, but Oxford is the fourth most visited destination within our state. And um, I know everybody wants to know the ones ahead of us, so it's coastal Mississippi Jackson, which is our capital. Clearly, a lot of meeting travel there, um, and just because it is the capital of our state. And then Hattiesburg, um, which has a huge transient um, industry driven market. So um, we are, you know, small but mighty, and we're the only one in North Mississippi. So I think that's also another um, thing to note. Um, so yeah, and then tourism um, also is responsible for about 2,000 jobs within Oxford, which is 7.9% of all the jobs in Oxford. Um, then on the back, you can see 
food and beverage numbers as well as lodging numbers again that's fiscal year 21 and that is in the month that they were collected not reported um, I know you all know how that works but um, we do go back and fill them in um, for the month collected so for food and beverage when you take those dates we were up um, 26 percent from fiscal year 20 and then 41 percent which is not surprising in hotel motel or lodging taxes um, because of the shutdown with covid in um, 2020 but we've got a great team over at visit oxford and we're working hard every day to um, really use this money to the best of our ability to get the best return on investment so thank you for the trust in us and um, can't wait to see what we do next year so thanks can't wait thank you so much Good job. Huge. $172.6 million of economic impact. All right, 7A, Jimmy, come up and do your two additions. Uh, the first is the request permission from mayor to sign the state local agreement. And what this is, is this is just the administrative paperwork to allow us to receive payment from FEMA through the state for the uh, February 2021 disaster. Motion made. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And the Aye. second is to designate me as the applicant agent uh, because I filled out all the paperwork. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Aye. Number eight, request permission to adopt and authorize the mayor to sign the updated statewide mutual aid compact agreement with MEMA. The statewide mutual aid compact is the legal instrument that allows us to receive and send resources from other communities or two other communities during the during a, a disaster, uh, and the state hadn't updated it in about three years, and they wanted it updated if we, if we would. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Jimmy. Keep the bad weather away, please. Mm -hmm. Not promising anything on first. <laughs> Ready? So, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, is this one the car show? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the 14th, the, they requested the DHS lot. Um, we're good with that. We just want to make sure. Do we need to charge on the? Yeah. You know, I I, I saw this and the uh, the agenda this time. They, it had been on the agenda the time before and was mm -hmm. withdrawn by the applicant. So I know Jason tried to reach out to him today, today. to to see if that was still a request. I'm opposed to this request. We have a huge car show the following weekend that we have um, planned for. And I, if my understanding is that um, it is for just a smaller number of cars. And if that's the case, then I think they can just pay to park wherever they decide to park. Okay. Now, certainly yeah. that's open for discussion for any of the members that you feel different. No, I mean, I think the discussion when I talked to them last time was that they could use the DHS lot and just pay for the... Yeah, meter for the, spaces for the hours that they're there. Yeah. yeah yeah works for us i think it's nine to two was their request so mm -hmm. really it's only a four-hour window that they would yeah. have to pay to park anyway that's right that's right yeah. anybody feel different yeah. all right then we'll welcome them and they can use use whatever parking they need all right next is request permission for up to 20 officers to attend summer session classes from may 31st to july 29th at northwest community college for the phlebotomy grant program and an estimated cost of nineteen thousand thirty nine dollars plus immunization costs chief yes ma'am this is our request to spend the money that we received on the grant this is all grant funded but with that you know high dollar amount we just want to make sure everybody yes. was good so with moved. It. second all in favor uh, any opposed thank you thank you Chief Gardner, discuss repairs to Oxford Fire Department Station 3. So, yes, ma'am, we have a uh, plumbing issue at Station 3. We have a drain pipe that is apparently broken and is leaking under the slab and has concrete inside the pipe. Um, Greg Pinion from Buildings and Grounds has gotten the two quotes. The lowest quote is $62.94. That does not include, you know, replacing the tiles after the repairs are done. That's, that's coming in and cutting out the concrete getting down to the pipe, making the repair, and then putting the concrete back. So I did meet with uh, Mr. Brown from Tatum Insurance today, and we're going to file an insurance claim, and we, and we will not begin the repairs until we hear back from Mr. Brown. All right. Move we approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Chief? Yes, ma'am. 
Um, a second reading of public hearing of a proposed ordinance for case 2856 to amend Article 2, 3, and 5 of the Land Development Code. Robert? All right. Uh, nothing has changed since the first reading of this, and we have not received any comments from the public. This is a public hearing. All right. Is there anybody here to speak on this um, second reading and public hearing? All right. Hearing none, does any board member have a question? All right. Then we'll have a third reading and vote at our next meeting. Thank you, Robert. Second reading and public hearing of a proposed ordinance amending Chapter 2, Administration, Article 2, the Mayor and Board of Aldermen, Division 1, generally Section 2-24, Officers and Employees, Appointment and Adding Section 20-30, to abolish the Municipal Election Commission and to establish an agreement with the Lafayette County Circuit Clerk's Office to have the County Election Commissioners conduct municipal elections. Yes. Ashley. That's quite a mouthful. Um, yes, uh, there have been no changes since this was presented at the first reading. Uh, I've received no public comments. All right, this is a second reading and public hearing. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to this change in ordinance? All right, hearing none, we will have our third reading and a vote at our next regular board meeting. Request permission to approve budget amendments and reallocations, Ashley. Uh, yes, um, once again, I'm trying to keep up with these a little better this time instead of giving you a long list of these. So we have another very short list of mostly um, net zero changes to most of our departments. Anybody have any questions about those changes? Nope. Move to right. approve. And a second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Any opposed? Thank you. Consider Thank you. change order number two with Daniels Engineering for the Brittany Woods Water Improvement Project. Rihanna? Yes, this request is to extend his scope of work to Cannon Road um, with the movement we're making on pumping water. We've to go ahead and have those plans approved if that is to become our water system. And we won't be able to do that, so we can advertise now for Brittany Woods Project. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Request permission to apply for the 2022 Emergency Road and Bridge Repair Fund to replace a pipe at Cannon Road. Rihanna? Yes, we are asking for permission to advertise. This is the project to replace the temporary pipe that the county had placed on Cannon Road when they removed the timber bridge before annexation. Mm -hmm. We've applied now. This will be our third application. We are hopeful that we can receive these funds so that we can install a new bridge at that temporary pipe crossing. Okay. Motion made. Okay. All in favor? Uh -uh. Any opposed? Thank uh -uh. you. Get Bart to come up and let's discuss pumpkin and water transfer. Okay, so at the last meeting, y'all approved a 30 day extension from the uh, agreement to the dollar to transfer pumpkin and water. Uh, since that meeting, we met with the public service commissioner, the general counsel for the commission, and we've got a path forward, it appears, as far as rate structure goes. Uh, so at this time, we're ready, or I'm ready to recommend that you make the finding that you have the ability and capacity to serve Pumpkin Water, and that it's in the city's best interest to serve Pumpkin Water, realizing that you still have the right ability, and you should reassess it as we move forward to make sure that those, that, that finding still holds true. Make that so motion. we need a motion that we have the ability and capacity, okay. and that it's in the city's best interest. You made that motion. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, Aye. consider request to advertise for bids for construction related to pumpkin water transfer. So part of the, the assimilation of pumpkin water to the city system required five construction projects. Uh, and we combined two pipeline projects into one to make it five, it's hard to see. It's one of them is a booster station, one is a, the uh, combining the two, the, Connecting the system and then the big ones, a booster station that allows us to serve, allows the to serve. That estimate for those construction projects is right at $2.7 million. Uh, as we move forward and get to a point where we, we are able to determine what the rate is, we need these big prices in place. So we'd like to go ahead and advertise for construction and be ready to, ready to move forward. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Mark. Aye. Uh, John can here. Consider a request to complete necessary filings for petitions to the Public Service Commission for pumpkin water transfer. He can't hear you, but it's not that either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's three petitions we have to file with the Public Service Commission. The, the transfer, the addition of an of area. There are some customers that they're serving outside of their area that, that we would have to incorporate in the certificate. 
and in a pair of modification which allows us to set a rate and sets the regulations for certain of those customers. Can we pass that or accept or all those at the same time or do we need individual motions? We do it all at the same time, just as, just as worded. Well, to, so the transfer, the addition of area, and the tariff modification. Or the necessary documents. Motion okay. made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, Aye. thank you. Ask the board to consider an executive session. Move. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The board will Aye. now consider an executive session.